All right, my barbecue lover friends, let's talk about thermometers. In fact, let's talk about time, temperature, meat, and meat thermometers as it pertains to our barbecue and just cooking in general. And just to tell you one of my personal stories, when I first started cooking chicken, I got out of work, ran home one afternoon, evening, uh, wanted to cook some chicken for my family, fired up the little grill, had way too much fire in it to begin with, was not real familiar with airflow and fire control, wound up overcooking the chicken. It was dry, it was a little toasty, and I tried to force my kids to eat it. <laughs> they were screaming and yelling, no more chicken, because it was so dry. Bottom line is, I was a newbie, and I didn't have any kind of guide. This was a long time ago. I didn't really know what I was doing. If I would have had some kind of a guide, I might have made perfect chicken that first time out. So I wanted to share this story with you guys, hopefully to help you not make the mistakes I made when I was learning, and to give you some sort of a guide on cooking perfect barbecue meats. Now in this video, I'm also gonna be doing a quick demonstration on cooking beef ribs and pork ribs. We have some big monster ribs and some baby back ribs going on right now. The cool thing about a thermometer is that it's exact. It is a precision instrument. So you're not guessing at this, or this, or this. It's perfect every single time. Now, if you cook steaks for a living and you've been doing it all your life, Maybe this works for you, but if you're just a normal backyard barbecue guy that cooks different meats for your family and your friends, that's probably not gonna cut it for you. Meat thermometers and any kind of temperature instrument is a tool to make your life better. Even the air conditioning in your house is run by a electronic digital instrument that controls and maintains the temperature to perfection in your house. Just to give you an example, I'm here at my son's house. They like it at 68 degrees. It's freaking freezing to this South Texas boy, man. It's way too cold, but 68 is where they like it. And the only way to maintain that is with a thermometer. Some people like their steaks at 128 or 130 degrees. That's what they like. You see, different meats are generally done at different temperatures. Some people like their steaks somewhere between 125 to 135. Some people like them at 140 to 150. And then there's some meats, like pork is really perfect, a little over 140. Chicken is perfect at 160 at the breast. But briskets and other big meats like pork butt generally need to be up around 200 degrees. Now in competition, we take our briskets and our pork butts to 208, 210 degrees. I have had to push a brisket up to 215 degrees. Now you tell me, how are you gonna tell the difference between 200, 208, or 210? You can't tell by looking at the meat or by looking through a foil to see what temperature the meat is. You see, competition barbecue meats are all about timing, temperature, and perfection. And thermometers offer us that perfection. Back to my original story, I'll just use chicken as an example. Chicken breast is perfect at 160, 165, it's still good. Once you start pushing past 170, 175, you're gonna start getting some very dry chicken breast. Now, how are you gonna know the difference between 160 and 170? By looking at it? No, it doesn't work that way. All you're doing is guessing, and you might guess right, but you're gonna guess wrong a lot of times too. All right, now I understand some old school cooks and chefs that didn't have thermometers when they first started cooking are able to do it without it. However, in today's world, pretty much all professional chefs and restaurant cooks use meat thermometers. Matter of fact is their aprons and their chef coats all have a slot for meat thermometers. Why do you suppose that slot's there? Because it's an important tool for them to do their job and to do it right every single time. You see, these chefs are taught to be perfect. When you go to culinary school, you're graded on a scale of perfection. Not close, not good, not average, but perfect. And to be excellent every single time. So when it comes to barbecue, why is it that so many cooks push back on using meat thermometers? Is it just because they're old school? Is it because they have a big ego? But I tell you what, I am one of those cooks that strives for perfection. And I love to see a smile on people's faces when they eat the barbecue that I make. And I've been making videos for a few years now, and I've always wanted to sit down and make a video about the importance of using meat thermometers. But somehow, that video kept getting pushed back and pushed back and pushed back. We need to do a carne asada, we need to do a rice video, we need to do a beans video. But today's the day we finally got a chance to record that video about the importance of meat thermometers. And for that, I need to give a big thanks to Inkbird for sponsoring this video. And if you've been following 
following my video, then you know you've seen me use thermometers many, many times before. And I have been using Inkbird thermometers for at least six years when my friend Stephen Powell gave me one at his home. So I've been using Inkbirds for a long time. So in this video, we're also gonna be talking about the Inkbird IBT26S. It's 5G, it's versatile, and it's all in one. It also has seven key features that I would like to just very quickly discuss with you. This is actually the first food thermometer ever with 5G. So that means it has faster speed and low latency. Key feature number two, it's a combination of technology and art. It has a really slick design that looks cool and awesome. From the technology side, there's a lot of cool features that can make your barbecue so much better. Now, key feature number three, it's practical, convenient, and stable. This is because of the two-in-one connection modes, which integrates Bluetooth 5.1 and 5G Wi-Fi. Key feature number four, it has up to five slots for meat thermometers, and all of them with high accuracy. It comes with five meat probe slots, so you could use four for meat, and one as an oven probe to monitor the ambient temperature in your barbecue grill or your smoker. Key feature number five, it has an adjustable LCD backlit screen. And a really cool feature about that adjustability is that you can remotely adjust it from the app. All right, key feature number six is visualize and real-time temperature graphs. So what that means is that you can monitor the temperature of your cook and see how your temperature went up and down. So if you're one of those people that really likes data, then this is a really cool feature for you. And lastly, feature number seven is the all-in-one Inkbird app. It also lets you monitor the cooking temperatures remotely. You could even set high and low temperature alarms. You can even customize countdown timers in the app. I don't know how many times I go and the meat's almost done and I tell myself I'll be back in about five minutes. Then I get distracted. Next thing I know, it's 20 minutes or half an hour or 45 minutes later and I'm going like, ah, I overcooked the meat. All right, friends, now I'm sure that by now you've kind of figured out that I definitely recommend using meat thermometers and I do want to highly recommend the Inkbird IBT26S. All right, now let's get on to the big beef ribs and the baby bags. Vamos, let's go. All right, as you can see there, we have our battery fully charged. I have my Bluetooth on and my Wi-Fi on. Let's go ahead and insert one of these right here on top. Look how instant that thing went up. I'm going to insert this one in the big beef ribs right here in the middle. Baby backs, I'm going to insert right in between the bones about the thickest part as well. Let's set up number one, which is a pork rib. We're gonna set them right at 200 degrees. Let's find our little cow here. There's the little cow. We're going to go to custom. And let's see, we're right there at 201. I'm okay with 201. Let's just set it up at 201. All right, so you can see here, it's cycling through our targets. On the left is the actual temperature, and on the right is the target temperature. Let's check out the ribs that are in the grill right now. They've been right on there, right at two hours. You can see I'm cooking from below. The big beef ribs have heat directly under them. The pork baby bags, they're a smaller cut of meat, so I did grill them right over the coals for a little while, and then I rotated my whole grate and put the big beef ribs over the coals, and I'm finishing off the baby bags with indirect heat. They're 198, 199 over here on the thick part. So we're pretty much ready to pull these pork ribs. All right, let's clear this one because we're done with the pork ribs, and let's go ahead and pull them out. How do you know when the pork ribs are done? when they flop like that. Ooh, look at that. Just about ready to break in half. They are done. No sauce needed. They are gonna be delicious. Now in the meantime, I'm gonna rotate my grate again and get my big beef ribs out from the direct heat and let them finish in direct over here. And we're just gonna let it finish. When it hits 200, the alarm's gonna sound and we're gonna pull them off. All right, our big beef ribs are looking good. They just clicked 190. Let's go see what we're looking at. Look at the way it's sizzling right there. We have our indirect fire on this side and it's a little hotter right about here. So what I'm gonna do now is rotate the beef ribs so we have nice even cooking. Yeah, you know, I really like how precise that is. It's at 190.3, you saw it click up to 0.4. It'll be clicking up to 0.5 and on and on. All right, our baby back ribs have been resting for about 20 minutes. Let's take them out and see what they taste like. Is that cool or what? And this is the meaty side. That's the thinner side. I like the meaty side because it's always juicier. Ooh -wee. That's a good looking baby bag. Lots of meat on there. <laughs> See how it comes right off without totally sliding off? Perfect. Mm -hmm. I have set up the probe we had on the pork rib on number three over here, and that is monitoring the internal temperature on the barbecue grill. We're at 248.6 there. The meat's at a 193.1. These are gonna be some delicious. Look at that moisture. Look at all that juice out of there. Oof. Man, oh man, look at that. 
We're shooting for about 2 to 201 on the big beef ribs. Might even take them a little higher than that, maybe 203. Target cooking temperature is anywhere from 250 to 300. All right, my friends, the alarm just went off. Guess what that means? Meat temperature perfection. That's why the thermometers make a big difference. No guesswork. It hit 201. Look at that temperature gauge over there. No binder, nothing. Just perfect, beautiful, big beef ribs. I can't wait, but I have to wait. I'm gonna give these 30 minutes rest. That's just the proper thing to do. Down to 172, 174 degrees. We are ready to slice. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful big beef ribs. Slice is really nice and easy. This meat is tender. Oh my goodness. Is that a juicy beef rib or what? Let's give it a taste test. Mm -hmm. Man, look how moist that is. Absolutely moist. Super soft. Mm. Wow. All right, and today we have a special taste tester, Mr. Elijah. What do you say, Elijah? Try it. How is it? Is it soft? Mm -hmm. Tender? Moist? Yes. What's it taste like? It kind of tastes like a little pork, the steak. Very good. A porky steak. How about that? The rub? Did you like that? The taste? Yes. Good stuff. All right, my friends, that wraps up this video on these big beef ribs and the baby back ribs. If you like it, go ahead and give us a like, comment, and share it with your family and friends. Tell us what you think about the big beef ribs and the baby back ribs. How do you cook them? How do you prefer them smoked or grilled? Thanks for watching. Keep the smoke light. Make it work. Boom! Boom. 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 Mina, you want some meat? Mina, you want some meat? <laughs> I was told not to give you any. Look at those eyes. Okay, what were we gonna do? That looks pretty. It's a little smoky. Tumbly in the tumbly, like Winnie the Pooh would say.